In this video, we are going to graph a conic. Uh, it's an ellipse. The thing that you can kind of tell, this is called a general form. We want to graph, we want to convert it into a graphing form, which means we want this thing to look like this. Y minus K over B squared. We want it to look like this. All right, so we definitely have to do some manipulation to make that happen. One thing that we want to recognize is looking at how do I know if it's a circle, ellipse, or a hyperbola? Um, first thing is if you have a plus between your x squares and y squares, it's going to be either a circle or an ellipse. And if these numbers, the coefficients in front, don't match, then you definitely have yourself an ellipse because you're going to go one direction left and right different than you're going to go up and down. So if these numbers match, so if that was a 4x squared and that was a 4y squared, it would be a circle because you're going to go in the same direction. So, um, so that's what you're looking for. Plus tells you it's a circular ellipse, and if they don't match, then you're looking at an ellipse. But we got to get it ready to graph. So we need to complete the square. The 4 is going to throw it off just a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. So first thing that I want to do is just kind of organize my stuff. Then I want to pull the x's together and the y's together. And anything that doesn't have an x or a y, I'm going to be moving it to the other side. So negative 21. All right, so the second thing is, is if we have not completed a square that has a number in the front. So to do that, and it's not on the y's, it's just on the x here, we have to factor the 4 out of the x's. So that means that 4x squared is going to become x squared, the 24 is going to become 6, and then we're going to complete the square on the inside of this quadratic. And then there's nothing to factor out of the y squared. So, minus 2y, plus we don't know. We're going to complete the square. And then on the other side, we're going to be adding two values. However, there's going to be one trick to it. That Let's say we add a 10 in here. Um, we'll figure out what that is here in a second. Technically, if this was a 10, it's really a 40 that you added because you would distribute the 4 in. So whatever you're adding here, you have to account for the fact that it's being multiplied by 4. So we will do that on that piece. So if that's a 10 there, we're going to make sure that we have a 10 here so we know we're adding 40 on that side. But whatever we're adding to the left, we got to add to the right. So that's what those are for. So completing the square. We're going to take the 6, the b value, and we're going to do two things to it. We're going to divide it by 2 and square it. And each number plays a role. So we're adding 9 into that. That number on the outside is what you're going to add. And so really you're adding technically 36 here. Um, so we'll factor that in a second. And then we'll take the negative 2 and complete the square with that. So if we divide it by 2, we get a negative 1, and square it, we get a positive 1. So you're adding 1. All right. So now we're about to get this almost in the right form. Uh, and then we'll have to do one last piece to get it ready to graph, to get it ready to look like that. So we want to factor this. Uh, what multiplies a 9 that adds to 6? It's going to be 3 and 3, so we can write it out twice. But remember that that number on the inside is going to be the number in your factor. Um, every single time. So this one's just going to be a y minus 1 if you were to do the factoring math on this. Uh, there is a 4 in front of that parenthesis, nothing in front of this parenthesis other than a plus. And then over here, we add all this together and we have ourselves a 36 um, plus a 1 minus 21, and that adds up to 16. All right, so uh, we need this to equal 1. According to our formula. So we're going to divide by 16, divide by 16, divide by 16. This will simplify. So we are going to have x plus 3 squared over 4 plus y minus 1 squared over 16 equaling 1. All right, so here's where we want to talk about what kind of ellipse we got going on. Uh, we are going to have more up and down than we will left and right. Our B value is going to be bigger than our A value. So our B value is going to be the square root of this, which is 4, 
and our a value is going to be the square root of this, which is 2. So we're going to go up and down 4, we're going to go left and right 2, so we're definitely getting a vertical ellipse out of this. Um, our center is going to be left 3, and then up 1. So left 3, up 1. Um, and then, oh, standard form, let's write that down. x plus 3 squared over 4 plus y minus 1 squared over 16 equaling 1. Uh, our center we now have graphed. Our vertices are going to be on our major axis, which is going to be on the y. So we're going to go up 4 and down 4. And then we'll go left and right 2. All right, so there's our ellipse. And then our vertices are going to be on the major axis, so they're going to be these two coordinates. So that coordinate's going to be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 3, 5. And negative 3, 1, 2, 3. All right. And then um, from there I need my foci, foci. Uh, those are going to be points on the major axis somewhere along here. To find it, I'm going to do the difference between my denominators. So my c squared value is going to be the difference between my denominators, um, which is going to be 12. And your c is going to be the square root of that. Well, the square root of 12, you can simplify into 4 and 3. So that becomes a 2 square root of 3. So you're going up and down um, 2 squared to 3. So uh, in the square root of 12 is about 3 and a half. And I would probably just plug that into the calculator just to make sure. I need that value because I really need to know kind of how far I'm actually going rather than totally taking an estimate on it. Um, so we're going up and down 3 and a half. But your coordinate, you want to be precise. So your coordinate is coming from the center, which is negative 3. The x doesn't change. The, the horizontal aspect of this doesn't change. What does change is on your center, you went up uh, this 2 square root 3. So it's 1 plus 2 square root 3 is one coordinate, and then the other one the x didn't change, and you went 1 minus 2 square root 3. So it depends what it's asking for. If it wants the decimal, then I'm just taking and actually figuring it out by going 1 plus 3.5, getting an answer, and 1 minus 3.5, getting an answer. Or if they want it to be exact, that's exact. So you got to account for both of them. All right. Um, and that was graphing a an ellipse that is not in graphing form. So you have to complete the square and turn it into the right form so you can pull everything out of there. And again, this was a vertical ellipse because there was more up and down than there was going to be left and right. All right.